when I went through C. diff, what finally got rid of it, 18 months of this hell. Brian, what do you think finally got rid of it? You can't go 10 seconds going on the internet, researching your symptoms without coming upon something that references some sort of infection, some sort of gut infection, some sort of hidden secret infection. And today we're going to be looking at, are these infections the myths of urban legend or are they the secret sauce, the holy grail behind everything that's going wrong with your health? We're going to be going in head, head to head with one of the lead researchers in digestive and infection health. And we're going to be breaking wide open the lid is what is the scientific evidence? What are the scientific mechanisms behind everything infection and digestion? How many of you guys have heard about chronic gut infections? Uh, for some of you, this is a well-versed topic, something you've been struggling with for a long time, while for others, it's something they've just barely scratched the surface. And for most of you, most of your doctors don't even believe it's really real and it exists. We're talking about infections that like have names like candida, um, SIBO, uh, H. pylori, C. difficile, and even uh, non-gut infection-related infections like even Lyme, long haul, believe it or not, those are all linked with gut infections as well. And these infections have been linked, yes, scientifically, to many other sorts of disease. And what are some of these diseases that can be linked with chronic infection? We're talking about things like autoimmune diseases, whether it's ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, rheumatoid arthritis, Hashimoto's. How many of you with any autoimmune disease know that infection is one of the culprits that's triggering it? Believe it or not, more and more scientific evidence is pointing to the fact that there is underlying infections that are the cause of this. So today we're going to be bringing on soon. Give me a call. Wait for it. Wait for it. I have a very special guest today. Without further ado, all right, our guests, we're inviting our guests, um, microbiome nerd himself, <laughs> Mr. Brian <laughs> Kaufman, who's the vice president of Prolean Health and Biologicals is here today. Welcome, Brian, micro nerd, micro nerd number one that I know. Hey, thank you, Maggie, so much for coming on. Yep. I am the microbiome nerd and uh, just, it didn't start that way, right? So 2,000 years ago, Socrates said all disease begins in the gut. And, you know, maybe that's true. And I, maybe we haven't come that far since then, but I believe that life begins in the gut. We have a mixture of different people in the audience. One of the things in common here is that they're all here watching and they, they know that infection is an underlying root cause of many of the things we're talking about, whether it's allergies, IBS, like you're talking about, cancer, autoimmune diseases, you name it, right? And... Um, one of the most common things that we hear that we have all experienced, and I am a doctor, I am an MD, is that doctors, medical doctors, do not believe that these chronic infections in the gut are real. Number one, urgent myth, myth number one, these infections aren't real. They were conjured up somehow. And so I would love to have you and I talk about how, number one, are infections real? And number two, how do they contribute to the disease? disease? Brian, take it away. Okay. First question is a softball. Yes, they're real. Okay. Second question, they contribute to every aspect in every body system, everything that's going on with us, right? Everything starts here in the gut. Now it may manifest as some type of skin problem, inflammation, or maybe achy bones or diarrhea or bloating, but it starts in the gut with an inflammatory reaction that's brought on by an endotoxin or a specific fungal or bacteria that causes inflammation. It just happens to manifest itself in that skin problem or that diarrhea or bloating, but it all starts here. And it's a cycle of events. For many of you guys that are on right now, you probably think to yourself, I've tried everything and I feel like I'm just a hamster on a hamster wheel. I'm huffing and I'm puffing and you know what? I'm not going anywhere because the missing piece of the puzzle was removing that underlying cause. If you look up into middle top left of your screen right now, it says altered gut microbiota right? All this is, is a top layer of your gut. You're coming in contact with the bad guys. The bad guys are then fed down into your immune system where that dendritic cell, that big octopus looking thing that's right there, binds it and feeds it to our immune system, those lymphocytes. Well, when we come overrun with endotoxins, right? That immune system is just, uh, it's just firing and firing and firing and it yep. just can't catch up. That well, immune activation causes a breakdown in the gut barrier. So that nice gut barrier that you have all of a sudden looks like this. 
Hi, I'm Meg UMD, and I'm a functional and holistic medicine physician and the creator of the Transform and Transform Protocol. If you're interested in learning what are the root causes of all chronic disease, go ahead and click the link in the description where I have a power-packed 30-minute training that goes over what are the five pillars of Transform. Go ahead, click the link, and I'll see you in that training. I'm going to tell you guys is that when you have more bacteria, more fungus, more viruses that are infecting your gut, you're going to have more of these toxins, more of the insides of these organisms when they split. They grow, they die. They grow, they die. They split open. But every time they spill open, they release a lot of these insides and they're very allergenic. When you're looking at candida, the molecule, just candida, let's speak candida, which is a fungal infection in overgrowth or infection in your gut. Um, the antigens that are on candida are some of the most irritating things to your body. And as a response, if somebody has a high amount of fungus in them, your allergy systems are going to fire like crazy. It just says allergen, 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 allergen. I would love, I mean, we're going to talk more about like what things bind to, but I know there's a slide around some of the allergens on different, um, on, on different organisms. I would love, Brian, if you could talk about the parts of the organisms that are allergenic gotcha. and also so, that some of these products can bind to. So the kind of, so what we're talking about is binding and removing, going to the underlying cause of that inflammatory response that leads to bloating and diarrhea and skin manifestations. It's an actual endotoxin. So specifically serum bovine immunoglobulin is an amazing antibody concentrate. It's like the bouncer for your personal club, right? You want to get the bad actors out. And so what you're looking at here is that another, this is a cross-sectional layer of your gut lining. And on the top left corner, you see that the antibody concentrate binds up that bad bacteria before it can set off that inflammatory response. When it binds onto it, hangs on tight, and, and increases and changes its size so that it can't go through that damaged gut lining. Once you've mobilized all that, all that inflammatory bacteria and start to move it through the GI tract, the immune system goes, sweet, we don't have all these bad guys on anymore. We can actually set off anti-inflammatory cytokines and allow the gut lining to go from this just Swiss cheese looking barrier and slowly contract and get those tight junction proteins and bring it all nice and flush so that you can live a healthier, happier life and start absorbing that water and nutrients and get rid of all that diarrhea and bloating. So I want everybody to pause for a second here because what he said has a mind blow section here. What we just said is that all these organisms, when there is an increase in amount of these bad characters, they, there's an increased amount of parts um, that are allergenic or parts that triggered a lot of these downstream effects and disease. So um, looking at the LPS, looking at the endotoxins, looking at the parts of these bacteria and fungus, there is something that he has researched and developed that can bind to these things. So can we talk about, there is a protein that or something that can bind to these triggering parts of these organisms. Can you explain what SBI is? So serum bovine immunoglobulin is nothing more than an antibody. It's a protein with a high antibody concentrate and antibodies do one thing. They are coded to specifically find those bad guys, latch onto them, increase their size and not allow them to set off that inflammatory response. It gets mobilized. It goes right out the other end with your poop, right? Best case scenario, get the bad guys out. And that's how I got here. For years, I was just giving Percocet, hoping patients would do better, looking at my sheet today going, all right, we'll see what we can do, right? I finally had a tool in my gut health toolbox to go in and remove the underlying cause and allow these people to heal. This was a great study that we did. Uh, so this was our kind of flagship, most comprehensive IBSD trial. And when we started, we said, well, IBSD is a blanket diagnosis for a lot of things, right? And we don't want to show endpoints that just reduces diarrhea for a small period of time. And then we never see the people again, right? We wanted to decrease the total number of days that people have IBSD symptoms like loose stools, abdominal discomfort, urgency, flashlights, bloating, right? And mm -hmm. we were able to reduce the number of days by 30 to 40%. That's like getting four months of your life back. Everyone that's on here right now, that's probably been dealing with stuff for probably years. If you can get the last four months of your life back, would you do it? I bet you would. But Brian, there are drugs on the market with less results than this. I mean, I'm serious. Oh, I know. I mean, when you <laughs> that's why we lost commercial coverage. <laughs> there are drugs on the market that have been approved that have more side effects. I mean, this product has no side effects. You have like 39%. There are drugs on the market that 
I mean, that's considered a huge response. So okay. this was a great study, actually. Go to the next slide. Here's the results. 88% satisfaction. These were people that were literally running from events in their own home. I can't go to honors day. I can't go to softball practice. I don't go to things because I'm too worried about where a bathroom is. We gave them their life back. Have you ever seen anything with 88% response? The answer is no. We're talking about also, there is bad bacteria, but there's also good bacteria in your gut. So, you know, we've already mentioned that when you take an antibiotic, um, it's going to kill off the good guys as well as the bad guys. Um, I know when I went through C. diff, I went through six rounds of antibiotics and you name it, I went through it and it still wouldn't go away. What finally got rid of it? Do you guys want to know? Do you want to guess? What do you think finally got rid of it? 18 months of this hell. Um, Brian, what do you think finally got rid of it? Not these six rounds of antibiotics. I'm hoping you're going to say SBI. It didn't exist 20 <laughs> years ago. I wish there was SBI then, right? I do too. I do too. Um, uh, I don't know. Elimination diets, uh, oh, prebiotics. No, uh, I tried that. It didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. At that time, we didn't have all these strains of probiotics, right? So it was eating a ton of yogurt and a ton of unpeeled fruit and vegetables. That's what did it. And unpeeled fruit and vegetables, a lot of probiotics and even spore-based probiotics that are in there. But the thing is for me is that still took a long time. And But that's what finally did it. There's such a huge role in increasing the population of good bacteria in your gut. So if you even think about just population wise, what I've seen, I mean, and we've done a lot of testing. I mean, I've seen thousands of microbiome um, studies of the ratios between the good and bad bacteria, the different strains that are in people's gut. And what we're seeing here is an epidemic with the good strains, I call them utility workers in your gut. Um, they're present in lower and lower numbers. And the number of different species of them, which we call gut micro uh, diversity, the numbers are getting lower and lower. So what is there to do? What is a targeted approach? Why do probiotics make such a big difference? In the R&D development, research and development around this, Brian, I mean, what's your insight on how important a role probiotics and specific strains for specific uses have become? It's so important. But you know what's more important than the probiotic? Mm -hmm. Timing. There's probably people that are on right now that say, oh, I tried a probiotic. It actually made me feel worse. It caused die-off effects. Well, that's because the diversity was all over the place. Yeah. First, we have to reduce the endotoxin load, use something like SBI to remove some bacteria. Once you start SBI, wait two weeks. Then we start throwing in mm -hmm. the spore-based probiotics and the Saccharomyces and things like that. In my opinion, in my experience, there's three ways, and I like to keep things simple, right? Yeah. There's three ways to fix the gut. The first one, is to remove bad bacteria. Go to that underlying cause. The second one is to feed good bacteria. Like you had to do it 18 months. You had to nurse those little guys back to health, yeah. right? It took a long time. A lot of fiber. <laughs> a lot of fiber. Right. So remove bad bacteria, feed good bacteria, and then nourish the gut microbiome. Great things like N-acetylglucosamine, glutamine, mm -hmm. slippery elm, things like that. And then there is a fourth one, and that's digestive enzymes and Chew your food. Mm -hmm. Break that food down. Hi, and thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in actively looking for a solution to your problem and you'd like to work with us, I'm going to invite you to go ahead and click the link in the description to book a chat with our team. What that's going to do is it's going to bring you to a calendar. Pick a time that's going to suit your needs best. It's going to be about a 15 minute phone call. After you book that call, there's going to be a link to a short questionnaire, and that's really important for you to fill out because it's for us to get to know you better and helps us to better prepare to make the most of our time together. After you fill out the short application, it's going to take you to a page where there's a couple resources. What I want you to do is go ahead and click two of those and watch those uh, two trainings. They're going to really best prepare you for your phone call with us to make the best use of our time together. I and my team look forward to talking to you to learn more about you to see if we are indeed a good fit to work together. Thank you.